Right, thanks for staying with us now. You're still in the United Kingdom. Fitness Day is celebrated on the third Wednesday in September, while in the United States of America, <coughs> Fitness Day is celebrated on the first Wednesday of September. Um, so Fitness Day is a great opportunity to learn about the benefits of physical activities and find ways to incorporate more movement into your daily life. All right, so this is a very important day. I think I'm the only very sedentary person on this set today because I've not done physical exercise in a long time. So just yesterday, actually today, it got delivered to my, my office. I've gotten a bicycle. Yeah. In case you see me pull up into the studio, <laughs> it's part of me just being intentional about physical movement. I have a treadmill now. I have a spinning bike. I have something. I don't know what that thing is. I have some dumbbells. I shall have a mini gym. So I have no excuse anymore not to move because I, I really don't want to go to any public gym. I just want to have like, you know, within my space there. So I'm hoping that will be. But the bicycle in particular, I rode a bicycle on the highway when I was a child. Literally, if I think about the thought of riding a bicycle on the highway now, I have palpitations. But I want to overcome that fear. So what I'll do is probably start within my, um, within the estate. Then I want to start going on the highway with the bicycle. So maybe from from VI right to um, the what's it called, the whole Atlantic, and come back. You know, just like have like an hour ride for the bicycle. I have a helmet. I can. I have. I, I bought actually. I wanted to sew it into my life. <laughs> I actually bought a helmet. But that's nice. That's a that's a good move. Because my friend move. actually started. She's part of the bikers club, the yeah. ones at Pit Stop. That yeah, you yeah, mm. yeah. So she's when she started, she was like calling me to join and all that, but I was just too lazy. Is, is this bicycle? When, the bicycle? bicycle the, yeah, okay. and, and I remember when she started, she started within Magodo. Yeah. But now they, they ride to. Yeah, I see them airport. sometimes on yes, Saturdays they ride, they and ride stuff. They ride on Thirdmill. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Like, yeah. usually I don't have the lever for that thing. I wanted to do power bike, but power bike would not make me move physically. So yeah, a yeah, bicycle yeah. would actually make me exercise yeah. whilst. You know, riding. So that's why I got the bicycle. So I go for myself and my son. Even though I'm not sure how we can synchronize the movement, but <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good move, and I wish you all the luck. Amen. And I hope your gym is used in one year. No, it will. Yeah, like used, like you get used to using it like regularly. It becomes a regular thing want for to you. Do that every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the good thing about my office is that I can come in my gym where finish, then go and shower in my office. Yeah. So that's part the, the plan because mm -hmm. I really don't have time, so I have to leave the house very early, mm -hmm. and I get home at night. So, so you have to infuse that into so your normal plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Into my that's hotel. good. So, that's yeah, actually good. Offices, the, the road is quite safe, so mm -hmm. you can just within, within yeah, the estate. Yeah. So I'm inviting you people to come and be my gym buddies. <laughs> <laughs> don't pay for subscription. I have, I have weights. I have everything. Just come. That's why I encourage you. Maybe, maybe we could do something like on a yeah, Saturday yeah, we morning. Can yeah, we so can do I'm something on a Saturday morning. Yeah, so make it really nice. Okay. okay. One okay. When I'm that, done. That will work. Yeah. All right, so ladies, what did you find for us in the news? So I'm just going to go at this. Um, there was a report that um, was published by the People's, People's Gazette. Okay. And this is um, reporting that former Nigerian House Speaker, Femi Bajamiya Miller, has been terminated as a licensed lawyer of the State Bar of Georgia in the United States after his corruption and ethical lapses over striped uh, acceptable thresholds for members. Um, it states that um, Femi Bajabia Miller, who currently serves as the chief of staff to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu himself, has had uh, uncountable scandals and has been ostracized by the prestigious body. Effective, and this happened, I think, 2020. I don't know why the report is just coming, making the news. Um, according to records recently obtained by the Gazette, he was found to have stolen money from a client and also failed to pay his membership fees. Wow, okay. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna stop there. And, <laughs> yes, I'm just gonna stop there. And it's, this is a, a very, very serious accusation. And um, for me, it's news. And I'm waiting and sitting aside and sipping black tea and waiting to find out how they're going to respond to this. Because 
obviously I know that there has to be a response to this mm. after this this kind of you know for someone who is currently for someone who is currently you know the chief of staff of the uh, president is a very very big allegation and I hope that uh, you know the government house or state house will be able to come out and say something about this because this is a serious allegation so Let's see how it goes. I'm waiting to find out what's going to happen at the end of the day. <laughs> I hold my peace. <laughs> Jenny, baby. All right, uh, so for me, um, an Indian baby girl right, was born at a hospital in Rajasthan, <clears throat> northwestern India, with 14 fingers and 12 toes. Now, the doctors have um, described her condition as a genetic um, anomaly, but her family is delighted about it, and they have publicly called her the reborn version of Dolagadevi, a well-known local deity whose temple is near where the girl was born. You know, you know this is the best place to have this kind of children. <laughs> no, but it's, it's true now, yeah. because you know most of the deities that the Indians worship, they have multiple hands. Multiple hands, hands. yeah. So the best, she's in the... To them, she's yeah. a, they, they worship yeah, rats she's in the and things. So they she would be well taken care of and yeah. well, you know, but looked they after. Will, they will come and kiss her feet. Yeah, they will, kiss her they will worship her. They will worship yeah, because they see these things I'm as. I'm happy that she's in the right environment because in some other okay. places yeah. that would have been a big issue. Now the life of that child would have been. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah. All right, so the young boy sadly has passed. Uh, remember the story about the twelve-year-old boy that had um, missing intestines. He yeah. was admitted in the Lagos State Teaching Hospital. Sadly, um, he's dead. Um, a source close to the family said that the, the boy had developed some complications and was rushed to the intensive care unit of the Lagos State Teaching Hospital, <laughs> um, where he was there, um, thereafter pronounced dead. Of course, the governor has sent his condolence message released by the chief press secretary. Um, it says it's a painful loss that the the, what's it called, the hospital, they really did a lot of work, put in a lot of work, they went extra mile, you know, to try to save the life of the child, you know. Um, also, the mother also, she literally, like, went everywhere to see how she could also save her young boy, 12-year-old. I think he's in a better place, because I really don't, uh, I'm trying to remember the situation why the intestine went missing in the first place. You I, know. I know. I think if I remember um, to an extent, the mom was, um, you know, she said, uh, I think he had a minor um, illness or a surgery where they had to open him up. And then she found out, you know, when he started reacting after the surgery, they found they went back to, an, I think, another um hospital and, and then they found the out that his intestine were missing and which is so I, I think it would be nice beyond the condolence um let's also try to investigate you yeah. know and let's also revoke licenses because again literally like we have hospitals here they are like a death trap in mm -hmm, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. like literally i used to say something i say jokingly to my friends i said see the kind of faith i have not to be in any hospital if i had that same faith Right? I'll be a billionaire with money. If I had the same faith with money. Because, like, literally, I pray myself out of sickness. Because I don't want to have anything to do with any hospital. I mean, literally, I've had a friend of mine that was traumatized. A hospital in this Lagos, in Magodo, to be precise. The doctor told her because she was spotting as if she was pregnant, early pregnancy, she was spotting. The doctor told her to go and abort the child, that the child was going to come out an imbecile. You know, that. so she started crying. She was really, I said, what did the, the doctor say? And the child was going to come out an investor, so it's better that they had already scheduled the abortion procedure. Thank God she called. Immediately she called me and said, what? What nonsense? When did you ever hear that a, a pregnant woman that is spotting is, 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 that is, what's it called? It leads to having a child that is an imbecile. Mm. So I took her, to, first of all, to go get scan. So we did the scan. The baby was still there. I said, no problem. I, call, I had called my gynecologist. And I said, no, no, I had a fantastic gynecologist when I was having children. Very, Dr. Uh, Schneike, very, very thorough. So the minute I called him, he, he said, okay, bring the scan result and everything. But I said, he said, she was fine. She just needed bed rest. And I think he did something minor for her and all of that. I can't remember what it was. Today, the boy is 15 years old. 
I'll be 14 years old. Wow. They're in the US and they live in the US. But just imagine, you understand? She so had I, I know what hospitals can do to human yeah. beings in this country. So it's beyond just sending the condolence. Can we get a real report? Let's start to demand. It's just like the young boy that just died, you just go and bury him like that. Let's start to get real, like, um, what's it called? Forensics, autopsies, or whatever. You understand? Then let us even dig into how the intestine went missing yeah, went in the missing. first place. These things are very, if you they're very basic things. There are people that this do is not hug. You can just I mean, somebody was telling like... me last night that a friend went to do surgery in Joss, one hospital in Joss. She woke up and started feeling pain, 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 only to find out that they are taking out one of her kidneys. Uh-uh. Yes. So hog, um, organ harvesting is a big deal. And it happens. So we can't turn a blind eye. So how did the intestine get missing in the first place? Let's find out. Then let us start to arrest people. It's not enough for us to say, oh, God gives, God take. No, we should stop all those kind of things in this country. <coughs> we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, let's discuss digital transformation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 